Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and this is the mid-year freak out book tag, which I always say in the wrong order. But this is really exciting to me because I have to check the date that I started my YouTube channel, but I know that the mid-year book freakout tag, the mid-year freakout book tag, whatever, was one of the earlier videos that I did on my channel. And so it's just so fun reminiscing and thinking back about how I was like so scared to start my channel back then, but I remember really enjoying this tag. So speaking of that, let me know if there's any sort of video you guys would want to see for like my one year anniversary on booktube because I think it would be kind of fun to do a video for that. So let me know if you guys have any ideas. I would love to hear them. I love your input. So let me know what you think, but let's just get into the tag. This is always super fun to do. I love I never get sick of watching people's tags, especially this one. So I don't care how many people do the same exact tag. I'll watch every single one because it's so interesting to me. You hit a lot of the big, the big important topics of the books that you've read this year. So let's get into it. I'm going to try my best not to be extremely repetitive during this video, but it's hard because some of the questions overlap so much that in order to have different answers for everything, it just would be really hard. So question number one is the best book that you've read so far in 2020. Oh my gosh. So I don't even know how you can just pick one, but I think I'm going to go with just two books for this because the next question I can put my other favorite books into that category. So my favorite book that I've read in 2020 so far is definitely The Star of the Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I just absolutely adore this book so much. This is not the edition that I want. Well, I want to collect every edition, but I still have to, I'm going to ask for it for Christmas because I don't need to be spending excess money on books. Anyways, this just transported me out of this world, off of earth into an imaginary world where I could completely escape to and didn't think about anything other than this book and this world while I was reading it. And I love it to death for that. My other favorite book that I've read this year is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. And this is a an Asian inspired fantasy that is very character focused on a mother and her son and her husband and it has like elemental style magic of I like to say ice bending and just such a heartwarming heartbreaking very character driven novel that is just is what's what's a better word than excellent it's just fantastic superb brilliant all of the adjectives it is just one of my new favorite books of all time question number two is the best sequel that you've read so far in 2020 and that is where I'm including the rest of my favorite books I just realized I still have to take the library cover off of this but obviously Memories of Ice this giant thing one of my favorite books of the year as well third book in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series I have a full review if you guys want to watch it but this was groundbreaking it was a masterpiece it was brilliant in the turning point for me where I became a diehard Malazan fan. Another one of my very favorite books this year and favorite sequels is The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. I can't believe how much I loved this war story because this is all war and all battle and all fight scenes and I am obsessed with it. Definitely one of my favorite books I've read of the, the year so far, but it is book five in the First Law universe. So absolutely, without a doubt, one of my favorite sequels. And the last of my favorite sequels and one of my newest favorite books, This Beauty, Dark Age by Pierce Brown, book five in the Red Rising world. This was so heartbreaking, but it, it was such a great installment in the series. And I go on and on and on about it because I love it so much in a review that I'll be posting for it soon. So you guys will see my thoughts then, but brilliant. Question number three is a new release that you want to read but haven't yet. And I have two answers for that. The first one is Lady Hotspur by Tessa Groton. The Queens of Innis Lear was one of my very favorite books of 2019. And this book, Lady Hotspur, takes place in the same universe, although it's not exactly the same. I think lots of years have passed in between. I'm not totally sure. But I love Tessa Groton's writing style and I love that world. And I have no doubts that this will be five stars for me. So I can't wait to read Lady Hotspur. The other one is actually a young adult fantasy novel and that is Bonecrier's Moon, which just involves this really cool magic system from what I've heard that sounds very unique and kind of very dark, but there's also supposed to be like this forbidden romance in the heart of it, I think. So sometimes I just eat up those forbidden romance within a fantasy world stories 
in young adult books. So fingers crossed they'll both be great. Question number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I could not just think of one. I think that most people would probably expect it to be Rhythms of War, but that's not. I mean, I think it's going to be good, but Brandon Sanderson's just not a favorite of mine. I think that he's solid, but not a favorite. So that's not my answer. I am so excited for The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by the Schwab. The concept just found, sounds fantastic. I love Victoria Schwab's writing style. I love her other adult fantasy books I've read. So I'm really, really excited for this book. I'm also super excited for Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, which is a young adult book that I think I will just adore from the sounds of it. Once again, I think it's like a forbidden romance type of dark fantasy. I'm so excited for Harrow the Ninth, which is the sequel to Gideon the Ninth, because you guys know how much I loved Gideon, and I'm just dying to learn more about Harrow, so I can't wait for that to come out. But lastly, the one that I'm really most looking forward to is Ten Arrows of Iron, which is the sequel to Seven Blades in Black by Sam Sykes, because Sal the Cacophony just became one of my favorite characters of last year. I absolutely loved the writing in book one and I'm really looking forward to what happens in book two because I don't know where it's going or what's gonna happen. And the end of book one was pretty devastating so I can't wait to find it out. But then also Kiera is probably one of my very, very, like if I had to choose one booktuber who's my very favorite, it would be Piera. She did a reading vlog recently where she said that that book is the best book that she's read all year and I loved Seven Blades in Black just as much as she did. So I have the highest of hopes for that book. Question number five is your biggest disappointment? Behind me, I'm not even getting it out. Senlin Ascends by, is it Josiah Bancroft? I wanna say, hopefully I'm right. I hated that book. I think I gave it two stars. It's not a bad book. It's not poor writing or poor plotting, nothing. It's just me, it's purely me. It's me only, it's me not you, it's me not the book. I think that so many people would love and enjoy it, but the plot, the storytelling techniques, the world, I just didn't like any of it, nothing. I didn't like any of it. I had to hate read it because I already owned it, so I had to push myself through it and that book was like the tipping point of where I'm like, you don't buy books before you read them anymore. <laughs> so definitely Sunlin Ascends. Question number six, biggest surprise. That has to be the Lycanius Trilogy by James Islington. And I've read The Shadow of What Was Lost and An Echo of Things to Come. And the ending of both of these books had my jaw on the floor. And give it some time because it takes till 60, 75% of the way through it to where you start really learning how cool this world is. But once you do, you will just be mind blown if you're like me. And I think this series is so underhyped. I don't hear anybody talking about it. And it's so wonderful. I literally am dying to read the last book in the trilogy. I can't wait for the library loan. So I cannot recommend this series highly enough if you like if you like Robert Jordan, if you like Brandon Sanderson, I think that you will love this series. I was very shocked by it because about 50% of the way through, I just thought, you know, this is a solid fantasy book. Nothing wrong with it, but nothing stellar. And then I was like, oh, everything's changed. Question number seven is favorite new author, and that can be debut or new to you. I have a couple answers for this. The first one is M.L. Wang from the author of The Sword of Kaigen. I cannot believe how stellar that novel was. And it's self-published. I know there's a couple other books that she's written, but she is an auto buy author for me now. And I am just eagerly awaiting whatever she comes out with next because I am I have so much faith in her as an author from what she crafted from the world building to the magic to the character work in the sort of Kaigen. I just know whatever she comes out with next is going to be absolutely wonderful. Now my other favorite new to me author is Sam Sykes because that book just has so much in it that appeals to me as a reader. It has kind of like, it has magic, nothing like crazy, but there's magic, which I love. It has good world building, but the characters and the humor are what does it for me. And his books have excellent, well, the one that I've read has just one of my favorite new characters and such great humor. So absolutely love him. And then the last shout out, because it's not a new to me author. However, he is a new favorite and that's 
Steve himself, good old Steven Erickson. He's becoming a favorite now. I had only read one book of his last year, so I read the other two this year, and I'm just gaining more and more faith in him as an author to where he's moving up the list. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. I tried so hard to think about this because I don't know if it's the type of books I'm reading now, why I don't feel that way often, or if it's just my age, I don't understand. Cause like literally I couldn't think of any guys that I was like, oh yeah, that's my new crush. And then I like forced one, which I'll tell you in a minute. But if I had to say girls, 100% Gideon the Ninth and Sal the Cacophony, love those ladies, love them. I love everything about them. That's why they're on my favorite female characters list. I'll link that video if you guys haven't seen it because I talk about them a lot. They're very, very, very similar. I clearly have a type of character that I'm drawn to. So I adore those girls. For the guys, I'm going to have to go with Matt from Wheel of Time because I, the weight of my heart is humor and the man's so funny. And book four was the turning point for me. I think I started to see it in book three and then by book four, I just adored him so much. And the way that he's just, he's so funny and he's a complainer and he, he has a lot to say about not wanting to do the right things, but then he does the right things. And I just, I'm here for it. I love him. Question number nine, newest favorite character. Well, I kind of already ruined that since I already talked about it, but definitely of books I've read this year, Gideon the Ninth, Sal the Cacophony. I think those are the two from books I've read this year that are my new favorites. There's a couple others that I'm still in the process of reading that I'm not sure. If they're going to be a favorite, I think that Rand could be, Randall Thor could be a favorite one day, but I've only read four books out of 14, so it's kind of early to say. Anna Amanda Rake is a favorite character of mine in the Malazan series, but I just haven't seen enough from him yet. So, I mean, in three books, we barely know anything about him. Min from Wheel of Time also absolutely adore her, but we haven't gotten enough from her yet to where I can say she's a favorite, so we'll go with Gideon and Sal. Question number 10, a book that made you cry. I don't cry while I'm reading books. It's about impossible. There's one book that has made me sob my brains out and that was An Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Blackman. That's the only book I can ever remember like crying in, like sincerely. There probably are a few of the young adult books about eating disorders that have made me cry as well. But so if I cried during books, it's gonna be repeats again. Dark Age, because that is a heartbreaking book oh my god and sort of kaigen heartbreaking book once again just like gut-wrenching your heart is ripped out in these two books so if i was a crier these ones would make me cry probably also memories of ice and dead house gates that i've read this year stephen erickson is the man of writing devastation I, he gets me every time. I always forget and then I'm devastated. So question 11, a book that made you happy. Probably the book that made me happiest while reading it this year is the first two volumes of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I cannot get over how pure and heartwarming and sweet and just delightful these books are. Probably my favorite graphic novels of all time because I can't even explain to you how much joy I feel while reading these books, which is so rare. But another one that made me really happy is a Crown Conspiracy, which is book one in Theft of Swords, because of how funny it is. It made me so happy. Royce and Hadrian are just the best. And the other one would be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, because I could not help but smile and laugh pretty much the whole time I was reading this. Question 12, favorite book to film adaptation that you've seen this year? I couldn't really think of many. Like I was really struggling to think of many. Oh, now that I think of it, no, I'm gonna change my answer. My first answer was Little Women because I saw the movie in theaters, absolutely adored it and fell in love with it. And then I read the book. So that has such a special place in my heart. I went to see it with my mom. It was just the greatest experience. I love that movie so much. I can't even tell you. Like I literally bought the, mo the film adaptation version of the book because I love the movie so much. But I just remembered that this year is the first time I've really watched the first movie in The Lord of the Rings. Is, is the first book The Two Towers? Why am I being this dumb? Anyways, I had read it, but I'd never really seen it. I had seen parts of it, but not all of it. And it just made me completely be obsessed with the world of The Lord of the Rings. I, I enjoyed the books. They were, I'm not gonna lie, a little hard to get through because of just the writing style and very lengthy, lengthy descriptions. But then seeing the movie and see all these characters come to life, 
oh, I just loved it so much. So now I still have to watch the second two movies. I haven't seen either of them. Once I do that, then I'm gonna go back and reread the trilogy again. Love it. So my answer has to be the first Lord of the Rings. Question number 13 is your favorite review you've written or filmed this year? I don't write book reviews hardly ever because I don't write out my thoughts well. They come out of my mouth better. <laughs> so I would have to say I just posted my review for The Shadow Rising Book 4 and Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. That's probably one of my favorite reviews I've done because I love the book so much. Same thing with Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson. I had so much passion for these books that I think it comes across in the videos. And I have so much fun rambling on for an hour in each of them. And then even editing it, I loved editing them because I was like reliving the book over again. So definitely those. But I also really, really, really love my review of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern because it's not much of a review. It's more like, should you read this? And I include a ton of quotes, some of my very favorite quotes of the book. And so I just love that as well. Question number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought this year or received. If I owned the Waterstones edition of The Starless Sea, it would for sure be that. But I have two answers that are very different, that appeal to my very different sides. The first one is The Raven and the Dove by Caitlin Davis, which is a young adult fantasy novel with a romance at the heart of it. I just think it's gorgeous. I showed you guys this before, how it's printed on the hardcover as well. This is just a quality, very gorgeous book in my opinion, and I am 100% here for the illustrated art of people like this on covers. It's just, I love it. The aesthetic is perfect. Give me this on a cover every time. The other one that is most beautiful, I just received in the mail and that's Dark Age. I absolutely love the gold. I love snakes like in art and in real life. So I love the black snake on this. And it's, if you know what this book is about, it's very relevant to one of the characters in the book. So I just, think that this cover is gorgeous and I'm really sad that I wasn't on the ball when I think it was Illumicrate came out with that special edition series. I want to say it had a spine that had a snake on it. Those books are just some of the most beautiful books I've gotten this year. Question number 15, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Is it cheating to say all of them? You guys know if you watch my vlogs, I literally have so frequently times where I just sit here really sad because I think about all the books I'll never get to read because I want to read that many books. But to name a few on my physical TBR, which is not big, there's what, 12 books, something like that, but I want to get rid of them before the end of the year. I have really low hopes of that happening. I don't think it will because of all the other reading plans I have. However, I really, really, really would like to get through a lot of these books on my physical TBR by the end of the year. The first two I literally freaking need to read. These have been on my TBR for one year. I have been talking about reading these books since last year, summer. And that is volumes three and four of Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. I think my problem with this series is that I love the art more than I even have words for, but as somebody who reads high fantasy and adult fantasy often, I, follow, I find the storyline very hard to follow and that's just frustrating. I don't want to have to think about it that hard every time. I just wish things were spelled out a little more clearly. So I need to finish these by the end of the year. Like no excuses. This is your accountability check, Brittany. I also, I think I'm getting to this next month, but I have the first two books in The Faithful and the Fallen. So I have to at least read Malice by the end of the year. I would love to read Valor, which is number two. They're not that long. They look big, but they're only 600 pages. So it really shouldn't be that bad. So no excuses, need to read this. The other thing I really wanna make sure is off my TBR by the end of the year is Steel Crow Saga by Paul Kruger, because one, I am so hyped to read this book. Two, I've heard it's phenomenal with Avatar and Pokemon type of inspirations. And three, I know I'm gonna love it. So there's really no reason why. I, I'm just like, it's because I don't have the ebook. If I had the ebook, it would have been read already. But maybe I'll do a channel buddy read for this if any of you guys would be interested. And lastly, our books, I'm definitely doing channel buddy reads for because I've already had a little bit of interest for it. And even if only a few people read along, that's great because I wanna read these books with somebody. And that is The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart by Brian Lee Dufree. I love these covers. I think that they're gonna be great. I haven't heard hardly anything about them, but I'm so excited to pick them up. So if I'm able to do that, that's four books and two graphic novels off of my TBR, so that would be great. <laughs> but that is all the questions. Let me know what are your guys' answers to these questions in the comments. What was your favorite book of 2020 that you've read so far? And maybe like 
your least favorite and tell me your most anticipated release for the rest of the year. I would love to know because that helps me learn about what books are coming out too. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.